we say good evening, good evening, good evening, wherever you may be watching from tonight. And we're so thankful to have you here uh, for Bethel Church Live tonight, and uh, where we're going to get into the Word of the Lord in the 15th chapter of the book of John, if you want to uh, begin to turn there. But thank you for joining us, and thank you for being live tonight here in our auditorium, our uh, the, the, our newly, uh, I guess it's almost like a remodel here, isn't it? Moving all the chairs back where they were over a year and a half ago before the world completely changed. But uh, I'm thankful that we're able to start getting back to a semblance of normalcy around here. And I'm expecting big things this weekend. Can you say amen on this Easter Sunday as we come together to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, last year we were not able to celebrate in person together. We were out in the parking lot honking our horns at one another, uh, cracking our windshields, our windows about that big and talking, you know, through the crack because we didn't know what this virus was going to bring. But thank the Lord, amen, that we are uh, this year going to be able to join in person and celebrate the risen Savior. Amen. I believe the way that the Lord intended it to be, like believers coming together. So you're invited this Sunday for Easter service. We're going to have Sunday school at 10 a.m. Brother Taylor is going to bring uh, the word to us in Sunday school. I talked to him earlier before church, and I said, Brother Taylor, I said, you know, uh, after so many years, of, uh, of speaking God's word on Easter Sunday. I didn't want it to be difficult for you this Easter uh, to not be able to get whatever's on your heart out. And so uh, we want to invite Brother Taylor to speak uh, in our Sunday school class uh, this Sunday morning. And so come on at 10 o'clock and then at 11 o'clock, I'm telling you, it's going to be a powerful morning of worship. We have a wonderful worship set ready. Uh, we're going to take communion together. We're going to get in the word of the Lord, and then we're going to allow our young ones and not so young ones. If you want to get out there and, uh, and hunt Easter eggs, go for it. You know why? Because I think we're going to have over a thousand Easter eggs by the time it's said and done, and that's not an exaggeration. Uh, last count, we had over 700, and some more came in uh, today. And so uh, we're going to have a lot of Easter eggs on Sunday. So come on out. And uh, our little ones, we have prize eggs. They're going to be able to win some money. They're going to be able to win some candy. And, uh, and I know in Little Legends Sunday that there's going to be some gifts given out. And it's going to be a wonderful Sunday. So come on out ready to celebrate Jesus. Aren't you thankful that he's alive today? Amen. He is alive. And we're thankful for that. Um, uh, please don't forget, no church Sunday night. No church Sunday night. We're going to take that uh, time to celebrate Christ with our families. And so uh, no church on Sunday night. Just wanted to remind you of that. If you're watching online, and we already have several that are joining us, good to see Brother Willie Gonzalez. We've been praying for you. Praise the Lord. And we sure do miss you and my Aunt Norma. We miss you a ton. And we're praying for you, and we know you're getting better every day. So thank the Lord for that. And then uh, Brother John McNeil all the way over in San Antonio. Is anybody going to San Antonio? Uh, Brother John is because he lives there. So um, good to see you tonight. But for those of you that are online, if you'd like to give uh, tonight to uh, the live stream and to the church, of course, the information is right below me right now. You would just put the phone number 715-803-4772. And then in the body of your text message, you type the number 1268773, and it will send you a secure link to give. Uh, that way, you can also check out our PayPal page, which is Bethel PCG, and you can give that way if you'd rather go on the website, BethelChurchHouston.com. Uh, you can go there and click on Give, or you can mail it in, 2414 Lauder Road, Houston, Texas, 77039. We appreciate your giving and all that you're doing to support our church and the kingdom of the Lord. Tonight, if you have a prayer request, you can also email them to rick at bethelchurchhouston.com, and we will uh, cover them and, uh, and cover them in prayer. Amen? And, uh, and, and we, we, we have a lot to pray about right now. Amen? Of course, we're praying for Brother Willie Gonzalez, Brother Willie Andrado, as Pastor Taylor mentioned. We prayed just a moment ago uh, for Brother Phil Cooper. Uh, we prayed just a moment ago for Brother Corey 
Cochran as his mother has passed away. We're praying for the family of Sister Sally Clark as she passed away. We're praying for Brother Sergio as he just texted me that his grandfather uh, passed away. And we just pray uh, God uh, to comfort them. Amen. And so we're praying for a lot of folks. Sister Carolyn Elliott still healing from her procedure. We're praying for her. Praying for Brother Craig, who needs a touch in his body. So we just know a lot is going on, and uh, if you would like us to uh, help you pray, then we certainly want to do that tonight. Let's get into God's Word. Can you say amen tonight? And uh, we're going to talk about joining the work of God, and I'm thankful tonight uh, that we can do that. There's a lot of uh, times in our life that we fill our life up with a lot of commitments, whether it's work schedules or time commitments or religious activities or sports. Opening day tomorrow. Is anybody else excited? I am. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you, buddy. And, uh, Noel, it's not the horns. It's the Astros. But we'll always say hook them horns. Uh, So community events. But the question underlying all of our busyness is this. What is the purpose? What is the purpose for our schedules? What is the purpose for our busyness? See, some people fill their lives with these events and activities to find a sense of purpose or to fill um, and, and mask a lack of purpose that they may be feeling. But God wants us to engage in work and in the ministry for the sake of building the kingdom of God. Amen? Uh, I, I can't stress this enough. If you're, if, you're simply, if you're simply coming to the house of the Lord to fill a commitment that you feel you have to the Lord, then you're certainly doing it for the wrong reason. Amen? The Lord doesn't want us to just come here because we feel a commitment. But the Lord wants us to come here with the goal and the purpose in mind of building the kingdom. And so uh, if you'll unplug on that other laptop, the... Uh, USB and plug it back in, or maybe that computer died. I don't know what happened. Y'all can still see me online, but we just had a major malfunction with the lighting here. But the Lord wants us to uh, build the kingdom, not just to come out of a sense of commitment and a sense of entitlement. But the Lord wants us to build his kingdom. Sister Laura is saying online, sometimes she overcommits. Her April is overcommitted. Anybody else ever been there where you overcommit in life? You can just raise a hand and say, yeah, that's probably me. Let me ask you this question tonight. I wanted to ask you this. When has a task looked bigger to you than your ability to get that task done? When has a task looked bigger to you than your ability to perform it. I'll start. I think when the Lord first called me to pastor here, I thought, Lord, I'm 35 years old or however old I was. Let's see, I'm 39 now. I've been here six years. So I was younger than that. Uh, I, was, I was younger than 35 years old when the Lord called me to pastor here. And I, I remember the day that, that I had the dream uh, that that uh, confirmed for me that this is where the Lord wanted us to be. And I've shared this with you before, but I had a dream. And in that dream, I saw our church uh, had expanded to two services. And I vividly, vividly remember uh, this dream. Uh, Brother Carrico was here preaching. He preached both services. And so uh, that was the dream to me that, that the Lord had given me that said, you know, uh, I, I believe it's time for us to go to Houston. So uh, we, we did that. We moved here and did what the Lord had called us to do. But sometimes I thought, you know what? Am I prepared to handle this? Uh, And I know sometimes maybe you have felt the same way. Anyone else tonight where you've had a task that has felt much bigger than maybe you were prepared to handle? Go ahead there, Austin. Have you ever had a job that was too big for you to handle? Cleaning Cleaning his room. (laughs) Yes. Amber said she was going to say it. Austin just said cleaning his room. What a good answer, buddy. Anyone else? Brother Amos. Brother Amos said when he got married, whoo, glory. I hear Because she's not here tonight. Jason, when have you had a task? Laundry, laundry doing your laundry, yes. Brother Isaac, when have you had a task that was really big? Taking care of my peaches. Taking care of your turtle. Olivia, everyone wants to answer tonight. When have you had a big job? 
Cleaning your room, you too. Yes, very good. So sometimes there's things that we can do in life uh, that seem big and they seem uh, unsurmountable to us, right? Uh, but, but what I want you to understand is this, that when the Lord is in it, can you say amen to this, right? When the Lord is in it, we can do all things. Why? Because the Bible says when Isaac has a bad attitude, when things are going wrong, I, Alicia and I have to tell him. And he says, I can't do it, right? And it may be like what Austin said a while ago, cleaning his room. And Isaac will say, I can't do this by myself. And we'll always remind him of what the scripture says. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And he's quoting it right now. So we can understand that believers are supposed to join God's work in both the church and in the world. Can you say amen to that? So let's look at John chapter 15 and verse number 1. And the scripture is going to say this. I, and I know a lot of you are probably familiar with this scripture, but let's read it again tonight. John chapter 15, verse number 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Amen. Verse 2 says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. And verse 3 says this, you are already clean because of the word that I have spoken in you. Here's something interesting tonight that I would love for you to think about. When Jesus said he is the true vine here, he was fulfilling a purpose and he was speaking that he was fulfilling a purpose that Israel did not. See, when we read about the true vine a lot of time in scripture, what we have to see and understand is the Bible is talking about the children of Israel. We have to understand that, that, that God is talking about the people of Israel. And in most of these instances, Israel was the vine that failed to bear fruit. They were disobedient. They argued with God. They got frustrated with God. They didn't trust Moses where he was leading. They didn't trust Joshua where he was leading. I'm telling you, I've never in my life seen or read about a, a bigger group of complainers who still had the blessings of God upon their life. When they were hot in the middle of the desert, he provided a cloud. When it was dark and they were trying to find their way, he provided a pillar of fire. When they were hungry, manna fell from heaven, right? When they were in slavery, he allowed them to break free from Pharaoh and parted the Red Sea. But still, a lot of times in Scripture, we read that they were the ones that were not isn't this crazy? They were the dead vine, the vine that was not bearing fruit. Because a, 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 a true vine, and that's Jesus, will bear fruit. It will produce fruit. But Jesus does not do it alone. Can you say amen? Now, he could do it alone. He could do it alone. But Jesus chooses to produce fruit through the branches. And who are the branches? Aren't you glad to be a branch tonight? Can you just wave your arm like a branch in the air, right? So we are the branches. We are believers who are God's co-workers. And so the father is the gardener who trims and prunes the branches to increase their fruit-bearing capacity. But the branches do not decide to bear fruit. See, if we're connected to the vine, we're going to bear fruit. It's a natural outcome. A, a tree, and I've, and I've talked about the tree in my backyard, right? It's a, it's a tangerine tree, a nectarine tree. And the freeze, um, the freeze got it, and we had some problems with it. It's dead right now. Well, I don't know if it's dead or not. It's, its leaves are dead. I'm hoping that it sprouts back to life, but the leaves are brown, and, and, and they look dead right now. Uh, but I'm telling you that that tree doesn't just in its mind say, oh, well, I'm going to start producing fruit. No, it takes uh, cultivating. It takes work. It takes care, right? And in this passage of scripture, Jesus talks about his father being the gardener. And a true gardener is not going to tolerate branches that do not bear fruit. If the father sees a branch that is not bearing fruit, then what does he do? cuts it off. He prunes it. He trims it. He cuts it. He severs it from the vine. Why? Because if a vine has too many branches that are not producing fruit, then it's going to die. It's going to suffer. 
And so that's what this scripture here is talking about in John chapter 15. Let me ask you this. When we talk about what Jesus expects for us, when we talk about being uh, the branches for the vine, because that's what we are. We're the branches. We're supposed to be bearing fruit. What are some things that you feel like that God expects of us as followers of Christ? What do you think God expects of you as a follower of Christ? Joanne, go ahead. What does God expect of you? She says, share the gospel, tell the gospel. Anyone else, what does God expect of you as a follower? Sister Sharia, what do you believe that God expects from you? Um, I was just going to say, I think he expects us to represent him in everything that we do. Yeah, absolutely. Sheree is saying we need to represent him in, in everything that we do. I want you to look at this with me because a lot of people will talk about producing fruit. And I want to show you three ways that people uh, can equate their lives with producing fruit. Number one is this. Some people equate producing fruit with evangelistic success. So this is what Sister Joanne said a while ago. We count the fruit that we're producing as the number of people that we have led to the faith in Jesus Christ. I've known some people in my life that have gotten a little bit too caught up on this particular thing. I've heard people that have stood up in church services and said, I've led so many people to the Lord, or I've led, you know, 25 people to the Lord this week. I, I don't believe that the Lord is, is, uh, looks down upon us um, favorably when we go to boasting that way. The Lord is going to reveal all that, and the Lord is going to show and to prove uh, uh, how many souls that we have won. So some people will equate fruit with their evangelistic success, how many people they were able to bring uh, to the faith. Number two, some people, they connect fruit to acts of service. So this is the ministry that we do in the name of Jesus. Like, uh, well, give me one. What's an act of service that people might hang their hat on in the kingdom? Mm -hmm. Amber said volunteering. Brother Amos said being the type of Christian that you're supposed to be. What else? What other acts of service might people build themselves up over? How about a uh, uh, worship team? We see that a lot in this culture today where worship leaders now, uh, and, and even some preachers, some pastors have become rock stars. They have to have their hair just right. They have to have their skinny jeans on. Listen, there ain't no pair of skinny jeans that would fit over my legs, right? So you don't have to worry about skinny jeans, but some of them do. And some worship leaders get uh, built up to these levels uh, on these pedestals, right? And then it quits becoming about glorifying God, and it becomes more about glorifying ourselves, so some people connect fruits to acts of service or the ministry. And then third, some people, uh, they will insist that fruit is about personal growth, which means the character of Jesus that God shapes in us. Or I'll, I'll put it like this, their holiness. They feel like they're more righteous than everyone else, that they're more holy than anyone else, that because they've been serving the Lord for 40 years, uh, that they're uh, better suited than somebody who's just been serving the Lord for 40 days, right? And so the question is, so which is it? We see all three concepts of this in ministry, so, but merely, uh, merely speaking that we're a follower of Jesus, it's inadequate. We can say all day long, Brother Billy, that yes, I'm a, I'm a follower of Christ, we can say all day long that I'm a Christian. We can say all day long that I'm going to do what God has called us to do. Uh, Sister Laura says the fruits come from our labor. And, and so we can, and she's right there, the, we, can, we can go all day long about following Jesus. But listen, life change must happen. You have to have a life change. I've heard so many people in my life that say, oh, yes, I'm a Christian but their life doesn't bear that fruit, right? Brother Taylor, go ahead and, and chime in with us tonight. Uh, Brother Rick, uh, the three things that you mentioned, they are all things that we need in our lives. But we must do them with a Christ-like spirit. They can become things that we, they can become almost an idol, if you please, to us. We, we do these things and we think, Boy, look what I've done. Look Absolutely. I've done. But it needs to be done with the humility and with the spirit of Christ as we do it.
He's lifted up and not us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sister Taylor, you want to add into that, please? Uh, Pastor Rick, I think you sum it up just about every time you say the uh, ending prayer for our service. And you say almost every time, and I'm so thankful for it, help us to go from this place and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Absolutely. It doesn't matter who sees you or who knows. You don't have to say anything about it. If you're busy being the hands and feet of Jesus like you want us to be, like you encourage us to be, then that's, to me, that's the fruit of what we're supposed to be doing. And, and you know, even myself, I have to catch myself sometimes if I get... Uh, you know, somebody on the phone, let's just say they're a customer service rep, and uh, I'm getting frustrated either because there's a language barrier or they're not exactly helping me the way I need to be helped. And you know how it is sometimes if you're on the phone for 30, 45 minutes, an hour with the customer service rep and they're still not helping you. And sometimes you can let that anger. Uh, but I always have to remember this, right? Uh, if, I, if I were to speak out in anger against them or if I were really to show, my, show out, right? And then they'll say, well, what's your email? Oh, Pastor Rick at BethelChurchHouston.com, right? And so then you're like, oh, there went my testimony, it's, I, I say this as a joke all the time, but I mean it. It's why we don't have bumper stickers around here, right? Because I don't want you getting in road rage and uh, giving a one-finger salute to somebody with a uh, follow me to Bethel Church sticker on the back of your car. And uh, so we have to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Brother Taylor. Uh, my grandfather worked a lot with fruit trees, my great-grandfather. Uh, he raised plums and peaches. All, he just had big orchards. But what he would do, he would have certain trees that he would work with. And he would take a branch off of the plum tree and graft it into the peach tree. Oh, wow. And he would have plums and peaches producing off the same tree. Wow. But... The Lord does the same thing with us. He grafts us into the vine. Yes. And our life doesn't come through what we do. The fruit that we have is not fruit we bear. What we receive comes from the vine. We've been grafted into that. Our life flow is through the vine. If, it, if we're disconnected from the vine, we have no fruit. Yeah, absolutely. If we're disconnected from the vine, we have no life. So once we're grafted into the vine, then can we begin to produce fruit that Jesus would cause us to produce. Absolutely. the vine, and that's where our life is. Absolutely. I told you you should have sat up here tonight because that's where we're going. We're, we're about to talk about if the, if the, if the branch is not attached, then, then it will die. And that is so true. Listen, God expects us as believers to produce spiritual fruit. And Jesus, he knew his audience here. And that's why he was talking about vine and being grafted into the vine, uh, because he talked about this disciple. Uh, he talked about this parable to his disciples to emphasize the importance of staying connected with him. And here's the thing: they, the people that heard him, because they were an agrarian society, which means they were uh, planters and farmers, and they knew what was going on with with the plant life. They would have understood exactly what he was talking about. And that's why he used this particular passage of Scripture. But let's go on to read verse number 4 really quickly uh, as we uh, start winding down here tonight, here in the next few minutes. Verse number 4 goes on to say this, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. Okay, we, 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 can, we can come back to that in just a minute, right? Um, it must remain in the vine. And neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you, then you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, now listen to this, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire. And burn. What an interesting passage of scripture that is, and we'll talk about it more here in just a minute. But I wanted to ask you what it means to you to be connected to Jesus. What does it mean to you to be connected to Jesus? When, when, we, when we read this passage of scripture and it says you need to be connected to the vine, what, what does that mean to you to be connected to Jesus? Go ahead, Joe. Jesus, 
you know, her obe obedience. And uh, then, of course, I read my Bible and I read my morning book that I say. Yes. For others, you know. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, and, and what I like about that is uh, because in reading the Word of God, we're going to produce more fruit, right? And when we talk about fruit, what are we talking about? We know what the fruit of the Spirit is, right? Peace, love, joy, all that. Uh, uh, long, uh, 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 peace, love, joy, uh, all of the ones that are listed there in the Scripture. And, uh, and, and those are the things that we're going to exhibit, right? If I want to have fruit of the Spirit, then I want to show peace. I want to show love. I want to show joy. And, uh, and, and that's what we want to be is connected to him. There's a stark contrast that exists between serving in Christ's power and serving in our own power. Think about this for just a minute. Peter experienced both. We're about to celebrate. In fact, tomorrow night would have been when uh, Jesus uh, and his disciples went and... Um, had the, the Last Supper together. Of course, Friday is when but Thursday night he goes and he prays. He's taken on Friday and he's, he's crucified, right? So, so many things that were supposed, that's supposed to happen here. But here's the thing. Peter experienced both, right? So Peter, think about this. When Peter went to the high priest's courtyard when Jesus was on trial, think about this. There was a girl there that asked Peter, aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? And what did Peter say? He got the wrong person, right? Not me. He said he wasn't. And uh, he said that two more times. Two more times Peter denied his connection to Jesus. Now that was him serving in the physical realm, right? Uh, we know Peter's denial was not true. He was one of the 12 disciples, uh, however, in, uh, in, in an ironic twist, his statement had some truth to it. Why? Because in that moment, in that specific moment, he was not connected to Jesus. He wanted to disconnect himself from Jesus. Why? He was scared. He was terrified. He had fear. Uh, he, he thought, hey, I just saw what they did to that dude. I don't want him doing it to me, so I don't know who you're talking about. Are you with him? No, no, I've never seen the guy in my life, right? And so Peter there, he, did not, he was not connected with Jesus. He was operating in his own power, so therefore he did not bear fruit at that particular moment. But that dark episode in Peter's life, it did not define him, right? Right? Because later on, we know Peter would preach a sermon where over 3,000 people were saved in the book of Acts chapter 2. So he goes from denying Christ to seeing Christ resurrected to now preaching the gospel. And think about this, telling the very same people that he denied Christ to, telling that very same crowd, hey, you need to get your hearts right, right? And he told the very same crowd, uh, he called on those very people who were hollering out, crucify him, crucify him. He talked to the same crowd and said, you need to repent and you need to follow Christ. And here, Peter's life exemplified the truth that when the branches are connected to the vine, they're going to produce much fruit. So how does it make you feel to know that God calls you to work with him? Have you ever thought about that? What a privilege, right? What an honor that the Lord calls us to work with him. Out of everyone in the world, he could have chosen, right? He calls us. He calls us to be the ones that he works through. Sister Norma is saying online that he is our lifeline. How true is that? Uh, Brother Clark used to teach, if he were the only person on earth, that he could still worship God. I say amen to that, right? But what an honor it is to make us feel uh, good in knowing that God called us to work with him. It's a privilege and it's an honor. And, and, and shame on us for taking that distinction so lightly. Because when we have a relationship with Jesus, we're going to produce spiritual fruit. Jesus was very clear when he tells them in verse 5, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. And apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus was very clear in this. The disciples who remained in Jesus... And Jesus, who remained in the disciples, they will produce much fruit. Jesus is the source of all power for growth in discipleship. Brother Taylor, please. Brother Rick, um, talk about Peter. And uh, the Lord comes 
back to him a little bit later. Uh, the Lord comes back to him a little bit later. Yeah. And he didn't call him Peter. Simon. Yeah. Lovest thou me? Mm hmm. And so he, Peter was when he was connected, Simon was when he was not. That's good. And he said, Simon, lovest thou me? And, you know, sometimes we can hear that and we can hear that question. And there's a lot of ways you can look at, at this scripture. There's a lot of different ways I've, I've preached on this. But one way is that when Peter was in the church, he loved the Lord. When they were together, he loved the Lord. When we're together, love us, thou me? Oh, yeah, I love yeah, you, Lord. Absolutely. But on Monday or Tuesday when we're out in the world, do we become Simon? And he's asking us, do you still love me? Like you did when you were in the church? Yeah. Fantastic. The thing to remember, too, about this passage of Scripture is this. Those who attempt... See, Peter was trying to do things his own way here. He was. And those who attempt to live the Christian life on their own, hear me, please, they will fail. You will fail. The Scripture says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen? And in the end, only those things done through the power of Jesus will remain. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So bear much fruit, it points to the idea of the believers, Jesus' disciples, being fruitful. For example, if you want an apple tree, you plant apple seeds, right? You plant orange seeds, you expect to get oranges. You don't plant one type of seed and expect a completely different type of fruit to grow. And so as Jesus' disciples in our relationship with him, we should yield spiritual fruit. And if we want love to grow from us, we should plant what? Love. If we want mercy to grow in us, we should plant what? Mercy. If we want forgiveness to grow in us, we should plant forgiveness, right? And, uh, and, and if we're not connected to the true vine, Jesus Christ, then we're going to die. We're going to wither up and die. Being rooted in Christ should transform our entire lives. It should, it should transform our worldview. Think about this for a minute. The world, for so long, has been trying to tell the church how we should believe. Listen, the Bible addresses this very clearly. It doesn't surprise me that the world believes how they believe. Let the world believe what they're going to believe about gay marriage. Let the world believe what they're going to believe about abortion. Let the world believe what they're going to believe about Jesus Christ and his church. Because the scripture says it's going to happen. The scripture tells us to not be conformed to the world, but be ye renewed. Be, be you separate by the renewing of your mind. Be you, be you transformed, right? By the renewing of your mind. So right there, right there, Scripture was telling us that, hey, the world is going to think differently than you. That's why when the church gets so up in arms that the world thinks differently than us, I don't understand that. Because we know scripturally that this was going to happen. So the Bible tells us to uh, be transformed. Don't conform to their way of thinking. See, too many churches now have walked the line over to where the world wants us to believe. We want to be more seeker-friendly. We don't want to offend people. We want to make sure that everyone knows uh, that they're loved. And we do. We do to an extent, but not at the cost of manipulating the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? It's, I'm sorry, Brother Taylor? Yeah, be ye separate is what, is what the Scripture says. And so... In our relationship with him, we should spirit, uh, yield spiritual fruit. And, and, and being rooted in Christ, we should see a transformation. If your life has not changed since the day you started following Christ, you might want to hit these altars again, right? Because we can't just pray this prayer in our, you know, and I'm not knocking my boy Joel Osteen at all. Joel does a great job at what he does. But, but a lot of times people, can, people will believe that if they just do his prayer at the end of sermons, that that's it. They're saved forevermore. That's not, that's not true. That's not true at all. The Lord expects us, right, to grow. Uh, 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 let me throw a word out there to you. It's called sanctification. Amen. And, uh, and, and that means that we're supposed to be growing in him. 
that when we come to him and we give our life to him, that's awesome, that's great. But when we do it, guess what? We're supposed to put the drugs down. We're supposed to put uh, the drunkenness the drunkenness down, the drunken spirit. We're supposed to put the anger down. We're supposed to put the pornography down. We're supposed to, whatever it is, right? And when we come to follow, and, and listen, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Doesn't the scripture say that? So I'm not picking on anyone tonight. You know, I've been in the same situation as anyone else that might walk through this back door, needing a Savior, amen? Needing a Savior. Um, but it, there needs to be a change in our life, and that's what Jesus is talking about here. And that change is producing fruit, producing fruit. Where has the fruit gone in the church today? Where has the fruit gone? The fruit has gone bad, Sister Alicia said. But when we transform our entire lives, our worldview, our thoughts, our behavior, listen, we're going to look like Christ. We're going to look more like Christ. And, and I know a lot of people say, how boring, right? How boring is, is this Christian life? How boring it is to not be able to do what you want to do? But I tell you one thing. I have a lot of fun serving the Lord. I have great friends serving the Lord. I have a lot of uh, fulfillment in my life by serving the Lord. Let, let's finish with verse six, is, verse 6 through 8. And let's finish right here as we wind down on this Wednesday night. Verse 6 says this, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers, and such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned, and this is to my Father's glory, uh, that you would bear much fruit, uh, showing yourselves to, I'm sorry, I don't know, I was reading there instead of here. Let's go to verse 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And this is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Let's wind down with this. Once the branch is separated from the vine, it's worthless. It becomes dead. It becomes dead. It becomes brittle. It becomes dry twigs and the branches shrivel up and the gardener what does he do with branches that have fallen if you have fallen branches in your yard what do you do with them you either take them to the side of the road if you live in the city of houston and let the city pick them up or you start a fire and you burn them you start a bonfire whoop he said start a bonfire um, the branches shrivel up and the gardener will gather them up to be burned in the fire. Unconnected branches are good for nothing. Psalm chapter one contains a parallel metaphor here. The, only, uh, the one who walks with God is fruitful and the scripture says this, like a tree planted by streams of water. But the ungodly are like chaff that the wind blows away. Man, I love that. So the contrast is strong, but it makes a point. Instead of living a life that goes up in smoke, woo, isn't that good? Because when you burn a branch, what happens? You get smoke from it. So instead of living a life that goes up in smoke, those connected to Jesus bring glory to God. And we bear fruit so that God is glorified. It's his glory, his weight, his authority, and his reputation, not ours, not ours. Any fruitfulness on our part comes from being connected to Jesus. And being fruitful for Christ is not a synonym for success. A lot of people believe that. But abiding in Christ, it also doesn't guarantee that you're going to reach all of your life goals. It doesn't guarantee you're going to be successful in, in any worldly sense. But the fr fruit that we produce in his power is fruitful in the way that it glorifies God. Can you say amen to that? So how do we live it out this week? Number one, we turn to Christ. If you have not yet, whether you're here in person or whether you're watching online, if you have not yet given your heart to Jesus Christ, that's the only way to be grafted into the vine, to give our hearts and our life to Jesus Christ. In order to bear fruit, we must be connected to the true vine. And if you aren't connected to Christ or you are unsure about your relationship with him, then it's time to come to the Lord. Can you say amen to that? Number two, we must abide in Christ. Prayerfully consider the fruit of the Spirit as described in Galatians chapter 5. We started talking about them briefly. And write down any areas where you aren't producing spiritual fruit. If you need to show more love, kindness, forgiveness, long-suffering, patience, whatever, write it down and say, I really need to work on these. And then finally, rely on Christ. Are you relying on your own strength or are you relying on strength of the Lord? God does not expect us to produce fruit on our own. 
In fact, we cannot do that. We'll never produce fruit on our own. And if you, aren't, if you are experiencing, excuse me, exhaustion or stress or burnout in your efforts to serve God, then prayerfully examine if you're relying on your own efforts. That's an interesting thing. A lot of people feel like they uh, are suffering from burnout. I've heard a lot of pastors say they're suffering from burnout, and it's a very, very real thing. In those instances in your life when you may be experiencing that, reconnect with the Lord and make sure that you're serving the Lord for His purposes and not yours. Because if we're truly serving the Lord for His purposes, burnout doesn't exist. It doesn't. You say, Pastor, that's kind of rude. I don't know if that's true. It absolutely is true. Because if we're serving the Lord for his purpose, I guarantee you that he's going to feed us and he's going to pour into us and he's going to give us the strength that we need. But when we let ourself get in and try to start serving for ourselves, that's when burnout happens. So tonight, what's the main point as we close? Be grafted into him. Serve him. Uh, Get plugged into him and make sure that our life is bearing fruit. And we love you guys so much, and we're thankful for those of you that were watching online. Great discussion tonight. We're praying for all of you guys at home, Brother Willie, and Brother Willie Andrado, Brother Willie Gonzalez, Brother Phil Cooper, praying for Brother Corey on the loss of his mother, praying for the Clark family uh, on the loss of Sister Clark, praying for Brother Sergio on the loss of uh, his grandfather. So a lot to pray about. We love you. Thank you for joining us tonight for this Bible study, and we will see you Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Brother Taylor will be bringing a word in our Sunday school. And then 11 a.m., it's going to be a time of celebration because Jesus is alive. Amen. And we're going to celebrate, have an Easter egg hunt this Sunday morning and a lot of prizes to give away. So come on back here to Bethel Church this Sunday. We love you and thank you for being here with us today. God bless you so much.